Welcome to Rosebud Homestead, where we really focus on self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness. And today we're going to do something a little bit with self-reliance and food security. Many of us grow potatoes, many of us don't, but we can buy them in the grocery store. Potatoes are a staple food around the world in many, many cultures. And today we are going to do the best Dutch oven potatoes baked in their skins that Jim and I have ever tasted. We tried this just the other night and we were both so impressed with it. I said, we've got to do a video on this. And so that's what this video is all about. Jim has started the charcoal out on our cooking table. It's ready to go. We're going to be cooking in this 10 inch lodge Dutch oven. And the potatoes are not gonna to touch the bottom but I like to just give it a quick little spray anyway. And then I have this rack. I, this doubles as a canning rack and um, a rack that I use for a whole lot of things. So I'm just gonna put that rack in there. We're gonna put the lid on and then we'll get the, the um, Dutch oven started warming up and then we'll come back in here and I'll show you how to prepare the potatoes. So we'll be right back and we'll meet you out at the cook table. Our little uh, cook table and here are the coals that Jim started he does such a great job on getting these ready to go so I'm going to set seven or eight of them just out right here it's awkward with these gloves on but better than to be burned should be good enough here is our 10 inch Dutch oven. And now I'm just going to dump the remainder right here on the top. So a total of 25 coals, seven on the bottom and the rest on the top for a 10 inch. I want it to get up to between 350 and 400 before we put the potatoes in. And the other day when we did this, it only took about 45 minutes for the potatoes to cook once we put them in. Now I do have a little thermometer right here. I actually found this one the other day in the drawer, so now I have two of these, which is great. All right, let's go back in the house and get the potatoes ready. By that time, this should be ready. I'm just gonna check right here. 114, so we have a ways to go. This is a no fuss, no fancy recipe. And I'll tell you, they're the best baked potatoes we have ever had in all of our many, many years. And so let's talk potatoes for just a minute. What kind of potatoes are best for baked potatoes? Well, it kind of depends on what you want as an end result. For us, we love to open up potatoes like this and then dress them up or dress them down. Load them with whatever we might want or eat them just almost plain. I'm not sure what Jim is gonna do, but I loved the ones the other night so much, I'm gonna keep mine with just a little bit of ghee and salt and pepper on it. So these are russet potatoes and they are more on the starch side. And that's what you want for a lovely, fluffy baked potato. We will not be using foil on these potatoes. Uh, that will destroy the whole effect that we're trying to achieve. So I'm just gonna give these a quick scrub with water. And I try to buy potatoes for baking <clears throat> that have very few or none 
or no shovel damages or cuts or scrapes on them because we want that skin to be as intact as possible. Then I'm just going to take this clean cloth and dry them. One of the big hints for this recipe is to start with a dry, oiled skin. So that's what we're going to do first. Getting these as dry as possible. And the oil that I'm going to use is just regular olive oil. Now some of you will probably flip out at this. I could use a pastry brush and be all dainty. But uh, you know what? It's been a long week. It's Friday night. I'm just ready to get in here and get my hands dirty and get us some dinner on the table. And sometimes we just use baked potatoes as the only thing we have for supper. But I was really excited to show you what these are like. So what's next? We're going to just crust them with salt and pepper. And I am using this pink Himalayan salt just because I have it. We can use any salt we want, but I love um, the fresh ground salt and pepper, which is what we're gonna do. This is fairly coarse. And I'm gonna put a lot on, more than you would think. And then the same with the pepper. Just lots of it. And then we'll turn them over and do the same thing on the other side. Get a close-up of those so that you can see how much salt and pepper are on those potatoes. Okay, let's go outside, see what our temperature is, and see if it isn't time to get them in. Grill armor gloves, much better. So our Dutch oven is up to temperature. Jim and I had to sit out here for a few minutes for it to get all the way up. That was just fine. It was a pleasant little rest. So it's up to 350. Here's our potatoes. And I'm just gonna put them right here on the rack. Drizzle some of this salt and peppered oil over the top of them from the plate. Lid back on. All right, we've dropped a little bit, but it will come back up. It will go up to about 350, 370, somewhere in there and then it will start to cool down. And I honestly do not know if it is the variable temperature instead of being in an oven with a steadier temperature or whether it is the Dutch oven or exactly what makes these potatoes so delicious. But whatever it is, doing it in the Dutch oven over coals like this is fantastic. So we're gonna leave it just like it is and we'll come back out in about 45 minutes and check on it to see how they're doing. It's been about an hour since we put them in. We came out about 15 minutes ago. The temperature was dropping fast, and so Jim quickly got about 10 more going, 10 more briquettes going. So that lifted it up. We're now at 274. It was down at about 230. And so I just checked them, and they are done. So my mouth has been watering. The smell is incredible. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this lid 
and set it over here to the side. And here they are. So let's take them in the house and see what we've got. All right, so here we go. I'm going to move them over. One of the things that I forgot to do was to poke it once with a fork on both sides before we put it out there in the Dutch oven. So I'm just going to make a, one little incision right down the middle of each one. Those sound like they're done. What? I said those sound like they're done. How are they sounding? Like they're done. <laughs> How can you tell? They don't make all kinds of noise like they're raw. <laughs> okay. And so then I'm just going to break them up a little bit so that they're coming out like that. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Oh, these are heavenly. Okay, and then I'm going to just put ghee. Jim is probably going to doctor his up some more, but I'm just going to get some ghee and put on mine. We're probably going to have supper in courses tonight. We'll eat our potato, and then Jim is going to come back and fix us some hamburgers. <laughs> depending upon whether we're hungry or not still. Yeah, we might not be hungry. Uh, last time we did this, the, the potato was enough. And so, um, so these look really, really good. I have to just take a little taste here, mash mine up a little bit. And I, I know a lot of people really love loaded potatoes, but I just quite like the potato itself. Jim will put cheese on his and maybe some salsa and, you know, we've put um, chili beans on them as well. This is just so soft and tender. So I'm going to put a little bit of pepper on mine. And some salt. From my perspective, the best part of this whole thing is the skin. It is crispy and, okay, here goes. Mm. It is perfect. I have to say that our ones that we had a couple of nights ago, the skin was a little bit crispier, which I just loved. So I'm not sure what the difference was but the potato itself, the meat of the potato is soft and fluffy. It has a wonderful texture. The crispiness on the outside with the crustiness of the salt and pepper and the oil on the outside just adds such a nice touch. So the thing about potatoes is that you can um, add them to any kind of, most any kind of a meal. And what we will do, now that we've kind of learned how to do this and are getting our feet on the ground, in terms of being able to bake potatoes and not just do the regular Dutch oven potatoes with a whole bunch of stuff. But these are pure, these are pristine. What we will do is put a whole meal together with uh, potatoes in one pot and then some kind of meat and then the whole thing from our food storage in our garden. And then we'll do a whole meal with baked potatoes being part of it. So we'll come back at some point, probably a little bit later in the summer when we have some of our garden produce to work with a little bit too. I hope you try this. These are fabulous potatoes, very filling. And in a grid down situation, we haven't used any power at all. And so just, um, we use 25 uh, briquettes to start with and then we added 10 more briquettes. So that was really our only expense. So enjoy and thanks for being with us.